أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا له وسلموا تسليما رب يسر ولا توسر وتم من الخير رب شرع لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وعلى لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم dear all hope all of you are in good shape here I am praying for the health of not only you but of your loved ones and at the same time I hope you are attending these classes very regularly and this regularity will definitely pay you inshallah as usual I used to say that if you have 90% attendance and your result will be 100% by the grace of Allah well after that we come to a very very important pharmacology lecture it is about the drugs interactions drugs interaction what I remember from the history that some of my students they came from foreign countries and they told me that uh, as we practice and we work in the wards we do have a small booklet in our pocket that is about the drug interactions so it's something very very important you should know about the drugs what you are giving and what important aspect are about that drugs are required usually I say that you can't be master of all the drugs even we are not so what you have to remember you have to emphasize on the prototype drugs and those which are very in common practice drugs may be important from different points of view so anyhow we will teach you these drugs and interaction here we have a general lecture about it but about the about different drugs what we will mention in later on we will go through their interactions individually so it's something it's a general lecture and I will try to interpret the common interactions so what's meant by drug interaction if you are giving a drug and then you add some other drug to it or more than one so the effect of first drug that is affected it is altered it may come down or it may go, go up or there may be even neutralization so it's something whenever two or more drugs they are given together so the overall effect may be may alter it will change so main types of drug interactions drug interactions if there are two or more drugs they are combined outside the body in vitro so it's that is known as incompatibility kindly note that down incompatibility so generally it is seen that in the wards people they go on adding uh, different injectables in the in that uh, glucose or dextrose and uh, so it's something very important you should be very clear about this aspect so what will happen in case of drug interactions so there may be change in color there may be precipitation or if it is not injectable taste may change viscosity may change smell of the uh, combined uh, drugs that will change it may become unpalatable 
in case of oral. So you have to be very careful whatsoever you are using. No doubt you can't remember all the drugs, but the drugs what you are practicing, you should have thorough knowledge about that. So we will continue over the drug interaction. One is the incompatibility. Note down, have a pen and a copy with, in your hands so that those words which are not discussed in the slides, you should note them and have a look on those things later on. So we come to the different drug Then another type, the second one, the drug interaction, these are, these are pharmacokinetic. Ah, you know what is pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetic. So the drug's interaction will occur at the level of, say, absorption, distribution, metabolism, or excretion, elimination, like that. These are the different uh, sites where interaction may occur. And third one, third one are the pharmacodynamics. Pharmacodynamics. There may be additive effect. Two drugs have similar effect, the total effect that is added. Or synergistic. Synergistic when two drugs, they have a similar effect, but they act at two different levels, is known as synergistic, at sequential level. And there may be even antagonist, antagonist. So two drugs are antagonizing each other. So, I mean, it is a broad classification. Incompatibility, drug interaction at pharmacokinetic, and drug interaction on the maybe pharmacodynamic. Then we go through different slides. We'll discuss it, inshallah. So what you are supposed to know? You should know, know what's uh, the definition of it is drug interaction and what are a few examples of uh, the pharmacokinetic interaction interaction at the level of absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, etc. And then some examples of the well-known drugs the pharmacodynamic interactions. So again, at the full level, right examples of drug interactions. You should know very, very common interactions. If you, uh, you are not familiar with a drug, you must consult that one <coughs> booklet. I, I also remember that there used to be charts about the interaction uh, and they were displayed in the uh, clinical wards. Next, drug interaction. So what happens? It is a modification of the action, a change in the action, or alteration in the action of a drug when uh, another drug is given side by side concurrently or sequentially after that too. So it's one of the definitions. Then, uh, so what will happen? Drug interaction may be beneficial, may be hazardous. Here too, they are divided into two types. I mean, the overall effect may, may be undesired or it may be a beneficial or desired effect and you are combining two or more drugs at a time. As you go on adding drugs, say more than four, so remember there will definitely be drug interaction. So your pres prescription should be to the point and prescribe minimum number of drugs, mind it. Prescription should be to the point and prescribe minimum number of drugs to avoid the, these drug drug interactions. Interactions related to the patient. You have to assess a patient while prescribing drugs. 
is you have been taught in detail. I mean, the factors affecting and those are the action of a drug. Almost same, almost same things are over here. For example, you have to consider the age of the patient, the elderly people, or those which have some critical disorder, so patient-related. Multiple drug therapy, they are taking different drugs at a time. So mind it. Be careful of while prescribing, say, to a one elderly person or to the infants or the in case of pediatrics. So multiple. In patient cases, patient-related factors, there may be kidney disorder, so the clearance is affected, and accordingly, uh, you will be very careful that hope this a combination drug may have hazardous effects on the kidneys, and they may have uh, toxic effects on the liver. Then. Cardiac disease is also one important thing. So what the drugs are doing to heart and hyperthyroidism that affects the <coughs> drug interaction or hypothyroidism. Patient-related factors. Then drugs-related factors. Drugs-related factors. So be careful about the drugs at first line it is written the drugs with therapeutic index narrow therapeutic index there is small margin of safety a small difference between the therapeutic dose and the toxic dose so narrow therapeutic index translated well-known examples are given over here digoxin no don't digoxin Dijoxin is a cardiac glycoside, a cardiotonic drug, note down in your notebook. Dijoxin, then phenytoin, one drug for anti as anticonvulsant, for conversion it is used. So you have to be very careful that as, that, as this therapeutic index is narrow, so so it, is, it should all be monitored. In well advanced countries, the level of drugs is monitored, or down. It is monitored. So there is, you know, a therapeutic window. There is a range in which the level should be kept. Then next one is the warfarin. Warfarin, anticoagulant. So if you will give more warfarin, there may be hemorrhage bleeding. Then another one is theophylin, theophylin, so bronchodilator, theophylin, bronchodilator, also diuretic. So these drugs, if I mean say theophylin or these are kind of drugs are given in high doses, there may be convulsions, not on, theophylin. Another name for it is aminophilin, aminophilin, theophylin. Translated factors you know you have been earlier taught about it some drugs they are enzyme inducers while the others are enzyme inhibitor overall either enzymes are the hepatic microsomal enzyme in general the inhibitors they are rather they have short time to act while the inducers they take say around seven days to induce the hepatic microsomal enzyme. And a number of drugs which are metabolized by this hepatic microsomal enzyme, so their metabolism will be fast, will be rapid, and their level is to be maintained by giving higher doses. Very important. If the enzymes are inhibited, then the level of a drug which is metabolized by these enzymes, that will go up. So be careful. Then drug-related factors, the plasma protein binding. 
plasma protein. Some of the drugs they have more higher plasma protein binding, while the others they have less. So one drug may displace the other drug. Highly plasma protein bound drugs. Examples again are the salicylates. You know about example of salicylates, well known example. Is aspirin. Note this please. Salicylates, aspirin. Warfarin, again you have been told, it is highly <coughs> bound to the plasma protein. Then sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas is a group. Sulfonylureas. Oral hypoglycemic drugs. Sulfonylureas. Then look about the drug related factors. Some drugs they have got zero order kinetic. Zero order kinetic. You have been taught about zero order, first order. Zero order kinetic means fixed amount in a fixed time that, <coughs> that is metabolized. Say in case of alcohol is given over here. Say seven grams in one hour. That will be my in the next one or again seven so one like that. Here another example phenytine in higher doses. Phenytine in higher doses that undergoes in the to the zero order. Similarly, aspirin in higher doses. Next drugs interaction. It is already displayed. They may be beneficial. They may be harmful, or they may be neutral. One different kinds of I mean drug in it. Drug may interact with a drug. It's known as drug drug interaction. Then you know you take food and after that say you take drug. So the drug may combine with the food protein like that. So the overall effect will be affected. Drug food interactions. Food interactions. Drug with endogenous agents, endogenous substances, endogenous hormones, they may react with that or they may interfere with that. Endogenous, say, neurotransmitters like that. The, the drug chemical interactions, it is about the test I mean, or the interaction in the laboratory. So one has to be very vigilant about it. Even in laboratory, the mixing of drugs should be very careful. There may be some time if they are oxidizing agent, there may be explosion. Here the same thing is repeated if reaction is outside body and you are mixing different drugs or you are adding to the infusion so it may be incompatibly at that time and then drug interaction may be in vivo in the body or you know. In vitro, here example is given in the syringe you combine two liquids or two drugs liquid so in the same syringe or you go on adding something to the infusion bottle so it's maybe I mean the total material may be toxic or there may be precipitation or there may be color change all these things are noted so what will happen what are so there may be change in pH or structure even leading to loss of drug activity I mean when you are adding something to the say infusion bottle so there may be change in pH or structure of a drug so overall there will be loss of drug activity there may be formation of precipitates also told earlier about the precipitates, precipitation you have a, a proper look on the liquid. Is there precipitation when you are adding something to the 
inferior bottle and the third thing there may be may be toxic effects toxic effects may appear next one caution very very important in general no drug be added to blood liquid or the amino acid solutions or to the fat emulsions to the fat emulsions again big uh, i'm reminded that you should not add anything to the blood to the amino acid solutions or to fat emulsion examples of a outside body if you mix like this thiopentone sodium and succinyl choline thiopentone sodium note down thiopentone sodium it is ultra short acting barbiturate thiopentone sodium american name is pentothal pentothal so it's given as an aesthetic for short surgeries and the other one is succinyl choline the next other name for succinyl choline is succamethonium succamethonium now done succinyl choline hope i am not wrong succinyl choline so what is this thing it is neuromuscular blocker note down succinyl choline is neuromuscular blocker it is depolarizing and other well known example say with the heparin you add penicillin benzyl penicillin are you add to heparin dextrose or sympathomimetic drugs sympathomimetic drugs or hydrocortisone so there may be reaction outside and the uh, uh, that required beneficial activity that will vanish so is something common heparin so avoid this mixing heparin with benzylpalestine or dextrose as impetomimer sulfid or even the hydrocortisone these substances are commonly used all these are heparin and other drugs given over here in vivo interactions you have been told that pharmacokinetic interaction may be they are or pharmacodynamic in repeatedly pharmacokinetic interactions one drug changes the absorption distribution metabolism or excretion of the other drug these are the different various levels at which the, there may be interaction so characteristics of this kind of interactions these are not easily predicted no prediction of whether drug is about the absorption distribution interactions with one drug cannot be assumed to occur with related drugs and other characteristic of such interaction interaction with one drug cannot be assumed to occur with related drugs then few patients taking combination drugs get affected few patient taking combination drugs get affected i mean the characteristics at the various uh, levels of pharmacokinetic interactions here it is shown on your left side drug at the level of drug absorption <coughs> absorption is from lungs and from the muscles in injection absorption from the from the stomach absorption you know got is very lengthy and <coughs> absorption is there then after the absorption transport of the drug is inside the body then drug displacement <coughs> drug displacement so drug with more affinity may 
displaced the other drug from its binding size, like plasma protein, plasma protein, or even tissue proteins. Drug displacement. And then drug metabolism, biotransformation. So you have been told that certain drugs, they are enzyme inducers, while the others are in enzyme inhibitors. So by, at the level of biotransformation, there may be interactions. Yes. At the level of absorption, what interactions may are expected and how? The amount of drug absorbed a rate of absorption is altered due to different situations. Amount of drug absorbed or rate of absorption is affected due to different situations. One is the gut motility. Gut motility. Here is the transit time, gut motility. If there is short time in the gut in the stomach or intestine, so drug will be less affected. If um, the gut motility is suppressed, so the drug will stay there more of so. Then the pH of gut, you know the media in the, the stomach is acidic, we avoid that in the gut, in the, gut, in the intestine, it is alkaline. Then, at the level of absorption, gut mucosal function, are they damaged or intact? Gut mucosal function, they also, uh, they are related to this interaction. Then the gut flora, next is the formation of chelates. Certain drugs, they chelate another drug, so the absorption will not be there. So formation of chelates. You will have a lecture on chelating agents. Chelating not on chelating agents. Not only at but also in forensic medicine. And complexes. Other examples given over here are commonly used as the antacids. Note down also known as gastric antacids. Gastric antacids. So most of the gastric antacids they contain calcium, for example, calcium carbonate or aluminum, aluminum hydroxide. So if these antacids are given and side by side after that you give tetracycline, so what will happen? Their absorption will be affected. Tetracycline make, I mean, that may be absorbed by this source. Then, second example is cholestyramine. Cholestyramine. This drug is anti-epilipidemic. Cholestyramine. No doubt. It is rather cholestyramine. So if you are giving somebody cholestyramine as an anti-epilipidemic drug and side by side you are giving digitalis or you are giving thyroxine so their absorption of the later drug that will be affected that will be absorbed by the cholesterol then the next drug is metoclopramide very well known for nausea vomiting metoclopramide not on metoclopramide so what this metoclopramide does it is prokinetic Again, no, don't please. Prokinetic, gut motility. It announces gut motility. So, for example, cimetidine is given side by side. So, the less cimetidine will stay in the less cimetidine will be absorbed due to the transit time. Then if someone is given liquid paraffin, liquid paraffin, no, don't. It is laxative. Liquid paraffin. Liquid paraffin. There are also soft paraffin, hard paraffin, this liquid. This it is petroleum product, petroleum, petroleum product. So if someone is taking it, so the vitamin D will not be absorbed. 
Then, rate of absorption of paracetamol, well-known drug paracetamol. It is diaphoretic, antipyretic drug, analgesic, paracetamol, auto. The rate of absorption of paracetamol is reduced by anticholinergics drugs, anticholinergic, note down the well-known example, atropin, anticholinergic drugs. So what will they do, anticholinergic drugs? They will inhibit the gut motility and paracetamol absorption will be reduced. And similarly, if you give metoclopramide, that would also affect the paracetamol absorption. These are few examples of at the level of absorption. Then, at the level of distribution, drugs, one drug may displace the other drug from plasma protein binding. Well-known examples given over here, these drugs have more affinity, the endoset or endomethacin, Painkiller anti inflammatory drug. Talbutamide, talbutamide, hypoglycemic or sulfonamides, antimicrobial drugs. So, what they do, they displace warfarin from the plasma protein side. So, the level of warfarin that will increase and there may be hemorrhage or the bleeding. The other example is if you are giving sulfonamides or the salicylates, aspirin and related drugs. So they may displace talbutamide, talbutamide, oral hypoglobs. So you know the drugs in free form, they are active. So the talbutamide effect of what would be the effect of talbutamide, there may be hypoglycemia. Another example related to sulfonamide as a sulfur drug. What they do, they displace bilirubin. Number of, if you give these drugs to children or even elders, so you can see the yellow eyes of the patient when you are giving sulfonamides. This is at the level of say, distribution. Next one is. It is about the cytochrome P450 family. These are the enzymes. It's the major metabolizing enzyme in phase one. Major cytochrome P450 family. It's a major metabolizing enzyme in phase one. So related when especially when the oxidation, you know oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis. What is phase one? Phase one, this question is asked in your viva. So there may be enzyme reduction, there may be enzyme inhibition. Then another enzyme is the xanthine oxidase inhibitors. Xanthine oxidase inhibitors. They are given to control that uric acid in oxidase inhibitors, allopurinol, like allopurinol. Here is another drug interaction at the level of active tubular secretion. Active tubular secretion. Say probenicid is given, so it interferes with the secretion of penicillins. So there is penicillin and also Dapson, Dapson, another drug for leprosy, Dapson, Dapson, no don, also for malaria, Dapson. So what will happen? When you give probenicid, it is secreted itself while the penicillin is conserved and its action may be, pro, its action is prolonged. Another example is the Dapson then there will be decreased excretion of penicillin or the dapsone and they will have high levels or the effect may live longer. Propenicid, no down, very important. Also uric is uric.
the interaction at kidney level aspirin increases toxicity of methotrexate you know aspirin weak base acid it is a weak acid so they at the level of excretion it is excreted and methotrexate level will increase in body so that may have you know methotrexate no down basically anti cancer drug but no also given for autoimmune disorder like there's rheumatoid arthritis no down very important or the drug of choice methotrexate methotrexate and another example is the sodium bicarbonate it increases excretion of aspirin and barbiturates sodium bicarbonate when you will give this uh, alkali so the urine is alkalinized sodium bicarbonate so with that what will happen this aspirin the weak basic acids and barbiturates the weak acids so they are changed to ionic form and they are excreted their excretion is facilitated next example is about the kidney and that giving giving ammonium chloride ammonium chloride when you give so the urine that will be acidified not on ammonium chloride urine will be acidified so it increases excretion of amphetamine the weak bases are excreted next pharmacodynamic interactions pharmacodynamic you have been told that there may be addition there may be synergistic where there may be antagonistic effect on the same receptors or even on the different receptors what are the characteristics of pharmaco dynamic interaction these are predictable interaction with one drug are likely to occur with related drug say the drug similar drug of same groups so if their interaction with one drug there that is expected to be the same with the other related drug these interactions are so occur in most patients receiving the interacting drugs interpharmacodynamic interaction synergism here you see the addition is 1 plus 1 two drugs when combined the total effect is the algebraic sum in case of antagonism 1 plus 1 is 0 or m maybe 0.5 receptors interaction examples of antagonism given over here is the nsaids and angiotensin angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor nsaids is non steroidal anti inflammatory and the other one is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor if you give together the total effect will decrease then interaction with food so if you give tetracyclines with milk products so their absorption will be affected they are bound to the milk products so the their bioavailability that will decrease next example of food interaction you are giving warfarin as a as a blood thinner and at the same time you are giving vitamin k containing foods so one is coagulant and the other is but you know vitamin k containing foods then next example you say give mono amine oxidase inhibitors mono amine oxidase inhibitors they are given to treat depression if they are given with tyramine containing foods that contains like the cheese or the yogurt yogurt is dahi and cheese is paneer 
uh, if you are in the contained pyramid. So what will happen? There may be pressure effect, hypertensive effect, hypertensive crisis. Then with food, if you take some food, <coughs> medicine with grapefruit, you know grapefruit, it is a microcell enzyme in bitters, so the drug level, if you give a side by side, that will increase. I mean, the drug taken with grapefruit juice, it contains a special uh, uh, substance, chloroquinones, like that. You will study it later on. Importance of interaction. Warn the patient not to take any other drug for some new illness without consulting the doctor. If you go through the common prescription in the market, you see there are even 15 or 16 medicines written in that without taking care. So it is the duty of the doctor or the pharmacist to tell you that, I mean, these drugs are interacting, acting, and these are the hydros or like that. Number of aspects, the pharmacist, he should check and he should explain how to take the medicine. Another thing is about the common medicines, over-the-counter medicines, not done, OTC, OTC, over-the-counter medicines, like the cough syrups, common cold drugs, uh, and drugs for body aches. So they contain substances, so which are, uh, one should have good knowledge about the ingredients of a cough mixture or a medicine for common cold or the medicine for body aches. Then uh, another example on anticoagulants takes aspirin for addict. For example, one person is taking morphine or other anticoagulant and side by side is taking um, aspirin. You know aspirin is in small doses, it is antiplatelet, not on aspirin in small doses, antiplatelet. So what will be the overall effect? There will may be bleeding. Next, I mean, it is completed over here. Just few examples have been given. Thank you very much. So we close it over here. Good luck.